kind of looking back, um, I think one of the things that made our friendship feel just like, like a close friendship very quickly, as soon as you moved out to California, is that um, I think we complement each other in, um, in our strengths, our weaknesses, um, hmm. both in our personality, but our music. So, you know, the things that you're describing about my music um, are things that you do um, the opposite that I admire. Um, and I think our personalities are that way, too. For example, you, you're just a real, you're kind of a go-getter. You're a bold uh, producer. You just, I remember when you were out there, you were just kind of making one move after the other. And I'm just watching you going, man, you just make decisions and you just don't hesitate. And I actually learned mm. a lot from you at that time. Um, and so I'm interested in asking you a couple of production questions that are basically the things that I don't, that I don't do well, um, as well. And that I, um, that are kind of the opposite of what I do. And like one of those things I'm thinking of is, um, my, my music tends to be quite, um, I don't want to say complicated because I don't, you know, I'm not dissing on myself, but it, it mm. has its definitely has its intricacies and its, um, uh, you know, developed um, musical ideas that are not simple. A lot of times, um, I try to be simple, and but I have to consciously work towards simplicity. And I have mm. to, and and something I hear in your music is that, and it seems to come easy to you that you just have a way of of grabbing these ideas and just delivering them. It's just like a, a nice, amazing punch in the face, just mm. instead of messing around. So um, is that true that that comes naturally to you or is there, is there a way that you kind of um, process music in your, in your mind to work towards that? And that's, that is such a great question. You know, I, I, I just watched a documentary on Steven Spielberg with Karen the other night. It's, have you seen that yet? No. Um, it's, it's just fascinating. It's mind blowing. And, and, uh, because I mean, this guy, this, this guy's just a genius. You know, he's a, he's a legend. I thought, well, this would be kind of fun to watch. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I, you know, ma making records are hard enough. I cannot imagine being responsible with a hundred million dollars yeah. to, you know, make a movie. Right. Um, and th there were several, several nuggets um, in, in this thing, he's a fascinating human being. Uh, but, but one of those things that he said is, you know, when I, when I walk into a scene and I know what I'm going to do and how I'm going to shoot it and where the camera will be, um, it's not nearly as good as when I walk into the scene, not knowing what the heck I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually scared to the point of panic because when he's scared to the point of panic, it makes him actually have to work for that shot. Mm -hmm. And when he's working for that shot, um, ideas start coming that, that, uh, that he wouldn't have had before. So to, to tie that back in and to answer your question, it's hard for me to stay simple too. You know, I, I, it's, it is very important that, that, I mean, you know, I always try to strip a song all the way back just to the words. I just want to read the words and I want to see, is this a conversation that somebody's having with me or maybe a conversation that somebody's having uh, with God? Um, does the conversation make sense? You know, is this how somebody would really talk, you know? Uh, because then I think it, once you eliminate that issue of trying to fix a problem in the lyric musically, then... The <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I never heard that put that way, but that's so true, uh, right? Like, oh, I don't like that lyric. Let's just cover it up with a big... Like swoosh. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's do the double Tom thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, you know, it's, you know, that the, the chorus just has got to, it has got to impact almost like it's, you know, uh, like a tree just falling over just, you know, and I think, I think what I've learned through the years is that to make the most out of this, precious amount of space that we have um, to achieve a certain decibel level of impact, the more that we have in there, the less ability we have to make it hit that impact. Mm -hmm. We can't have a guitar as loud if we've got 
three different pads and four different thises and mm -hmm. 16 tracks of backgrounds. And, yeah, you know, um, and I've always kind of challenged myself daily, you know, to reach back to the, hey, the less is more. The, the, my, my favorite thing to eat is a great steak. And all it takes mm -hmm. is a great steak yep. and some salt and pepper. That's it. Yeah. You don't have yeah. to mix like 15 different ingredients to make this, you know, right. thing. But the it's, steak has to be good is, the, is your the point. The steak has to be know, good. It, and, and the steak is your song. Yeah. You know, it's you can have USDA grade, 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 fine steak. You know what? Nobody's going to screw that up yeah. unless you overcook it. So or put too much junk all over it. Does, does that mean you're pretty heavily involved in in the songwriting uh, for the artists that you work with? You know, there's, um, I think there are two different schools, uh, approaches to that. I've always kind of felt, you know, from the get go that, you know, when you're hired to be a producer, um, you're given a, an enormous amount of power that could be used in manip a manipulative way, quite frankly, to, I mean, cause you know, you really say, Hey, you know, that, that line isn't good. It needs to be this. You know, blah, blah, blah. And if you do and you present your line to it, then all of a sudden you, you are a songwriter mm -hmm. on that. You know, to me, I felt like it was almost like double dipping. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if an artist came to me and said, hey, let's write a song and, and, and we take a blank canvas and write a song. Well, then I'm a songwriter with them, you know. OK. Um, otherwise, I feel like my job is to be an editor. I mean, the great writers, they have an editor and that right. editor is not an author. That editor is getting paid to do a job and, and bring out the best in the words that an author has to say. So um, fr from a songwriting critique, I'm, I'm really strict on that. You know, it's, you know, okay. I, I just want everybody to know from the get go, hey, I want free reign to have an opinion on your music. Yeah. But I want you to know that by having that does not mean that I become an owner in yeah. that music. Okay, you know? which gives and them the freedom then. They're, exactly. Then they're like, okay, now I'll involve you because I don't have to worry about you taking exactly. my song and sharing the mm -hmm. credit and all that. And, and, and then it, in the back of their mind, it isn't going to be, hey, when he turns on the record, is he also going to, all of a sudden, are the splits going to be different? Yeah, like, and right. then, you know, then it's too late. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a, there's a trust factor. Already an artist is completely vulnerable because, you know, they've got to sing. They're going to make a mistake. They need to feel comfortable and confident to be able to deliver um, and, and not feel like, hey, if I go for this note and, and badly miss it, that the producer's going to yell at me or think that I'm terrible mm -hmm. or something. You yeah. know, you, you want to just nurture that, that relationship um, to, to bring the best out of that, out of yeah. that person. You know, I've never, um, I've never seen a kid uh, that's an athlete really perform when the coach is screaming at them. Hey, <laughs> that's terrible. Yeah. It's like they freak out and then they, they can't perform even even more so, uh -huh. you know, yeah. but the coaches that come in and go, Hey, okay. How, how could that have been better? What, what are some things that could you've moved into that space there? Yeah. You know, um, you know, remember how we worked on this hmm. and you know, where it's like, then I think the kid's going to score more, you know, yeah. put it in the net a little bit, um, uh, easier. Yeah. See, the more, the more we talk, the more, um, the more it becomes clear just how much, uh, it is true that you are you just do things that are naturally um, that are natural to you that aren't natural to me. Um, that's something that I have to work at and learn because my my first approach is just to be like, okay, this is the way it should be. <laughs> Here's my <laughs> so which makes me a bad producer, you know. If that's oh, the way I'm it, a at all. doing things, no. but no, what I'm saying is I've had to learn the value of that. So I really appreciate that perspective. Um, I have a question for you regarding when you're working on, when you're producing and um, you know how songs, as you're producing them, they kind of hit a peak. Um, if, if you have the time to work on it, they'll hit a peak. And if you keep working on it, the song doesn't get better, right? Like it can get yes, worse. It gets worse. So how do you um, negotiate that point of knowing when a song is needing to, to continue to be worked on um, or, when uh that's th that's as good as it's gonna get yeah uh, man these are awesome questions you know this is what i do is is um you know when 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 i go in and track a song i'll go ahead and bounce a two mix of what we tracked right mm -hmm. in there it may be the band um uh you, you, you know, the drums and nothing edited nothing comped just 
you know, uh, whatever, whatever playlist is up, uh, hit the bounce and then take a listen to it the next day, first thing. Mm-hmm. And just kind of see, man, I, you know, where are the things that I'm feeling um, an, an emotional impact from? Mm-hmm. You know, and what are the things that I'm not feeling that from? Um, and just kind of making a mental note and then going to work. And then when you go to work, you know, you kind of start, um, you know, massaging some of the takes and, and, uh, and maybe there's, there's a need for, you know, another overdub, you know, here and there, and then start working on the vocal and make another bounce. And I kind of compare the two and say, okay, have, have I made it worse? <laughs> so <laughs> by, how do you, by doing what I did today? And how you do know, you compare the two? Because, you know, I do the same thing, but I, I rarely, like, I'll just kind of spot check, mm. especially with mixing. Cause I can't tell you how many times I've done a rough mix. And then later after I spent like half a day on a mix, go back to the rough mix and you're like, oh, crap. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's the exact point right there. You know, it's so how, like we, yeah. we suck the life out of it sometimes. So how do um, you, how do you actually do that? Do you actually listen to the full song or like, how I do. do you compare it? Just kind of at the end of the day, hmm. um, just kind of turn the lights out and just listen. I mean, I want to experience it while I'm making it like somebody's going to experience it when I'm finished with it. Mm. Hopefully. One I day, love that, know? man. Like, yeah. And, I, I remember and, your studio being like that. Like it was all about vibe for you. Like you have the lights down and you have, um, you'd always have incense, right? You, you still do the incense? I did. I, you know, I hope that I don't have mesothelioma from that. <laughs> I'll bet you do. Some, I know. It's, it's, um, I, I, I think I read an article that I think having in, burning incense is more harmful than anything else you can do to your oh, lungs. Oh, gosh. Like, uh, Not good. So I've kind of had to cut back on... Um, <laughs> on the vibe? <laughs> on the incense. I'm down to two packs a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. It's like, man. But that's um, cool, man. I love that. I, I, I love that about you, how you... You're in, the, in a wonderful way, you're like a kid getting to experience music that way. And I yes. think, I feel like that's part of the heartbeat of being able to do what you do. And, and that's exactly the way I feel about you when I listen to your music or get more, more importantly, get to see it. You know, there is this youthful excitement that is such an important part of the delivery. You know, I think, I mean, I'm not really going to believe somebody if they give me an, an unemotional speech. You know, I want to see that they're passionate about this. Hmm. You know, when you when you ask your wife to marry her, it's not like, will you marry me? It's like, will you marry me? And you're shaking and, and uh, yes. you know, it's like this whole, it's all the delivery in those three words. You yeah. know, and it's the same thing with music, you know, the, but I think what, what ends up happening to me and, and I, and it might happen to you too, is what, when, when all of a sudden, you know, you know, you'll, you'll be working on this song and maybe you're, you're working on it for uh, you know, seven days. That seems to be the absolute minimum that I can work on a song, but more like 10 days or two weeks. And maybe you've been working on other things in between, you know, and coming back to it, which is healthy as well. Um, but you know that moment when when you're you know listening, listening to this song, and and you realize that okay, all the problems have been solved, yeah. and now it is ready to be presented. Oh, it feels so and, good, yeah. And you're jump, and you're literally jumping up and yeah. down, and all of a sudden, what happens to me is I see that song being performed live. Nice. Like in my mind, I see whoever that artist is hmm. performing it live. And that's the minute it's like, okay, don't touch it. Uh, don't touch yeah, it anymore. Yeah. And then hopefully an A&R guy isn't going to come and ruin it by saying, hey, I want <laughs> you to you know, put more stats on the vocal or something. <laughs> right, right, right. You right. Know, or, or whatever. But again, you know, yes, those are the so what are you, rules to be played by. What do you do if, um, if you've, you've got a rough, like a very rough rough, and then you've worked on it for two days and you go back to that rough and it's better. How do you figure out how to get that magic back from the rough? Well, I think usually what it is, is, is I've over edited. Um, and, you know, thank goodness for there being several saves, you know, and sometimes it's a pain, you know, but you have to do it. You know, you've mm-hmm. got to go back to an old comp and, and start over again. You know, to me, it's, it's like, in the digital age, I think we've we've almost become too accustomed to the speed in which we can work. So it's like, oh yeah, I'll throw this guitar part down. Yeah, yeah, it'll, you know, it'll sound great once we mix it or whatever else. Um, that doesn't work for me anymore. I mean, I've got to get. I can't really trust anybody else with that sound that I'm hearing. I don't. I don't want to pretend like they're hearing what I'm hearing. <laughs> you know, I I want to find 
I want to find that magical group of pedals and amp and cab and microphone and mic pre that, that captures that one specific exact guitar sound um, and commit. That's yeah. it. I don't want to have to open up Fab Filter and, and take out 2K and 4K or whatever it is that, you know, I don't want to have to fix it. Mm-hmm. I, it's like, I just want to, okay, if it's too harsh, if I've got too much bite on it, I just need to move the mics over. Let's move them over an inch. Boom, there it is. You know, or there it is. Oh, it's worse. Okay. Well, maybe the cab's wrong. So let's put another cab up. You know, there you have it. With yeah. drums, it's a little um, uh, more difficult just simply because, you know, the way that, that people have become accustomed to hearing drums. Um, I mean, I mean, we've, we've got to drop samples on top of them, yeah. um, anymore. And, you know, I, I still listen to one headlight and shake my head going, you know, I, I still can't find a drum kit that sounds that good. It's mm-hmm. that much, you know, it's, it's almost like the drum kit is a singer or a person, you yeah. know, it's got yeah. so much, but we've got to, you know, drop bomb samples on it. And, and, uh, and again, it's, it's, I think that's a part of the give and the take. Um, maybe I don't like the way it sounds as much as, as, uh, as I did the way that it was just recorded, but, um, something we have to do. And, and, you know, that, that goes with like vocal comping and, and editing and sometimes tuning. You know, I think that, uh, the, the average music listener has, um, unbeknownst to themselves become addicted to the sound of autotune. Yeah. I think, I think there's a, it oh, yeah. has this sound. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, um, depending on what the music is, um, I'll, I'll just use it almost like an EQ. I'll just put an instance on yeah. and turn it all the way down where it's not catching anything, but it has this sound to it, huh. you know? Um, and That's you know what? Sometimes I do like it. Most of the time I don't, you know? Um, but uh, I, I think you can take care of a lot of tuning issues by just caring enough in in the recording of it yeah and yeah. and then in you know working in the comp you know i, I learned something from a, a a buddy of mine a producer here in town um he, he just um he was just frank with me one night we were just out eating dinner as friends and and he's like you know i think your i think your vocals could be i think your vocals could be tighter and uh which isn't really a, a word that we want to hear so much, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I was, I was interested to hear his perspective. Like, okay, what does that mean? He's like, well, are you, like, are you editing these vocals? Are you, I mean, to the song? Or are you just making a comp of something and then moving on, you know? And, and obviously, if, there's, if, you know, if you like something in a comp and it's out of time, you put it in time. But, right. But there's a lot to be said about really spending oh, time yeah. Yeah. on the editing of a vocal. Yeah, um, I, I've learned that a bit more in this last year myself of just because like you said before, it's like fixing problems. But then you get to the stage where you're like actually working with the art of like, what if I just move or extend this phrase or shorten this phrase or, you know, to just do this to it. Or even, you know, sometimes when auto tune is tuning it right onto the grid or to the note. But you're like, well, what if I push it down just a little bit or push it up, you know, a little more urgency if you like, you know, make it a tiny yes. bit sharp or just something like that where the singer didn't even do that. But you're kind of working, like you said, massaging. Um, that's a fun process because it's not just it really getting is. them to sing in tune. It's actually working um, and crafting the art of the performance. <laughs> 